In this video, I show you how you can use advanced actions to count the number of tries in a drag and drop interaction. Okay, let's get started here. So, got a message from Sampath. Sampath was creating a drag and drop scenario where he had two drop targets and a whole mess of drag sources. And what he wanted was when one of the drag sources is dropped on the wrong target, he wanted a counter to keep track of all the wrong attempts. And when another drag source is dropped on a wrong target, it would increment uh, that that counter by an additional one and so on and although he was never really clear as to what happens um, I've taken some liberties with my solution here and I've come up with a solution that I think will satisfy Sampath's needs but uh, it, it could uh, benefit uh, others as well so hopefully you find something useful in this so I've just created a very simple um, handful of slides here just a little title page and this interaction where we're we've got a whole bunch of circles and a whole bunch of triangles and some boxes for those there. Um, what we'll do is um, I'm just going to actually go with just square tri uh, boxes for these here. And I'm just going to make a few modifications here. I just want to put some spacing on the uh, margins for that. That's fine. It's the circles. And triangles are a little bit away from the edge there. First thing we want to do um, is to launch the drag and drop wizard. So I'm just going to do that right now. And for this particular type of interaction, we have a whole mess of circles that are going to go to the circle box, whole mess of triangles that are going to go to the triangle box. So I thought the easiest way to do this would be to select all the circles in one shot and we're going to use the add new type option and simply call this whole mess of objects circles. We'll do the same thing for the triangles. I'll select those and we'll just do a little plus there and we'll call these triangles as you would expect. So we'll hit next and the next thing for us to do is identify our drop targets. And that's these two folks right there. Hit next. And now, of course, it becomes really easy to identify the correct answers by mapping just one of the circles and one of the triangles to those boxes. So let's do the circles first. There we go. Fantastic. Same thing for triangles. There we go. So we've got all the bits and pieces of our drag and drop basically in place here. Um, I'm not going to use these captions, so I'm going to uncheck the failure and success caption. The reason for it is in this particular instance, I'm going to be using a slide where I have a message that says you ran out of tries or the congratulations uh, message as well. So uh, let's just move this submit button a little bit out of the way here. And I think we're good to set up a few things here. Uh, right off the bat, I usually like to turn my, my drag and drop interaction off. It's just a little bit distracting to have all those lines across the screen. And you can just do that by clicking on the show interaction icon on your drag and drop properties inspector. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do some modifications to this drag and drop. I'm going to select all of my uh, drag sources. And I'm just going to, under Format, we're going to choose an effect. We're going to choose the Zoom In effect. I'm particularly fond of that particular uh, effect. And we're going to look at the actions of the entire drag and drop interaction. Um, on Success, we're actually going to jump to Slide 4. That's where that Congratulations message is. And on failure, if we fail, if we get the answers wrong or we get too many wrong answers, we're going to go to that ran out of tries message. And that's going to be on slide number three. Jump to slide three. Incidentally, if you do get brought to slide three, the next button there will actually bring you past the congratulations message and jump down to the rest of the course. 
Uh, let's go back here now. And let's take a look at the drag and drop uh, actions here. So I'm going to give them infinite attempts because we're going to navigate away, or sorry, for a number of attempts is one. Then we're going to leave infinite attempts ch uh, checked off. Uh, because once they navigate away from this, uh, they'll be moving beyond this slide anyway. Uh, and of course, you could always have the option to include in quiz. Um, there's really nothing to um, adjust in the options tab and nothing in the format tab here. But one thing we are going to do is we're going to make some changes to the, um, the drop targets. The first thing we're going to do I'm going to do a couple of small things. I want the uh, circles to shrink down a bit in size, so we're going to make them 50% their normal size. In fact, we can make that same change to triangles as well. And our position, our snap behavior will be to tile, and we'll do the same thing for both of these here. And we're going to actually tile from the bottom and to the right. For both of those there and so we don't have any captions no nothing really to do there the one thing we are going to do is we're going to uh, um, play with our object actions a little bit here so this is for the circles drop target so let's uh, click on the object actions button and you'll see the accepted drag sources dialog here I'm going to uncheck accept all and I'm going to change the count to, uh, there's about 21 or so objects there. So I'm just going to say 11. Uh, anything beyond that, I don't want to accept uh, that many. And we'll just use the replace function. But you could do this differently depending on how you want your interaction to look. Um, and because this is for the circles uh, drop target, we actually want to run that advanced action if someone drags a triangle in. So no action for circles, that's fine. But for triangles, we're going to run uh, or execute an advanced action. So now I haven't created it yet, so it's blank, but we'll do that right now. So I'm gonna click on the advanced action icon here. And this brings me up uh, an opportunity to create a standard action. In this case, we want a conditional action because what we're going to do is we're going to navigate away from this interaction uh, once they reach a certain count of wrong answers. So we'll change this to a conditional action. And uh, the very first thing we need before we really build this is we actually need a variable, uh, a variable to store those wrong answers in. So let's hit the variable button at the bottom of the advanced actions window and we're going to add a new advanced action and we'll call this variable underscore uh, wrong underscore attempts initial value of zero and we'll hit save and close and of course now we're going to build our advanced action kind of around that variable uh, we'll call this thing um, increment wrong answer so if the variable and remember what we called it is equal to or greater than or greater or equal to and you can choose whatever number you wish uh, I'm just going to put in an arbitrary number there so basically if they get to 10 I'm going to say that uh, they're done. Ten wrong answers. I'm not going to let them proceed any further. So we'll just uh, we'll type in if it's equal to or greater than nine. And what we'll have them do the action will be is to uh, jump to slide three, and that's the the slide where we're saying sorry you've run out of tries. Otherwise, we're going to increment that that variable. So otherwise, increment the variable wrong attempts 
by one. So we're going to add one to to keep track of the number of wrong attempts there. We'll hit this. We'll save this as an action. We'll hit close. And that will be the advanced action that will be run when someone tries to drag a, a triangle over to the circle box, right? So we'll hit OK. We're going to do exactly the same thing for this object actions as well. But we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We're just going to put in our number here. We'll put replace. And we just simply want to run the very same advanced action and there we go one other thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to um, give us a visual representation of that variable so we're just going to put a shape just a standard object up on the slide here and we'll just say wrong tries or wrong wrong answers and what we'll do is we'll insert that variable uh, by using the insert variable button that's located on the properties inspector and we'll select the variable variable wrong answers or wrong attempts uh, maximum length 50 that's clearly more than enough and we'll click on OK there so that should show us the the current value of our wrong attempts variable and we'll be able to visually see what's happening on the screen as well so that's pretty much uh, good to go. Let's do a preview and see how this works. Okay, so here we are with our circles and triangles interaction. Let's hit next. So we have uh, we have our two different uh, um, items up here. Let's put a circle in a circle area. That looks fantastic. Let's put a triangle in the triangle area. No wrong answers so far, which is pretty much what we would expect. Let's drag a triangle into the circles area and see what happens. Oh, that's a wrong answer. So let's do the same thing with a circle in the triangle area. That's two wrong answers. Let's keep making wrong answers and see what, what happens here. I'll put a triangle in the circle area here, or circles in the triangle. Five wrong answers. seven wrong answers, eight wrong answers. Let's put a triangle in the circles, nine, and this should probably be about it right here. Ran out of tries. Let's do the preview again, but this time let's get it 100% correct and see what the uh, results are for that. Let's preview this. Uh, whole, again, the whole project will work. So we'll put all of our circles in the circle box here. Fine, no problem. And we'll do the same thing for our triangles here. We'll just do them in random order this time. And now we can hit submit. Congratulations, we got it absolutely correct. So, uh, guys, the, hopefully this uh, this helps out Sam Path and and uh, some of you as well. If you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.